Welcome to Mojo Plays. Today we're ranking every Assassin's Creed game. In a series this long, there's bound to be highs and lows. We're only looking at the mainline Assassin's Creed games and aren't counting the many smaller spin-offs like the Assassin's Creed Chronicle games. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Number 12, Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation. <laughs> Following Aveline de Grand Pré in colonial New Orleans, Liberation sees players battling against the Templars and slave traders of the 18th century. Though this game started out life as a small title for the often forgotten PlayStation Vita, it quickly grew to become one of the best games available on the handheld console, but given the Vita's smaller library, that isn't saying much. Since then, it's been released on 7th and 8th generation consoles, but the ports leave much to be desired. While Liberation did try to be more refreshing, the hardware limitations are too much to bear, and the story lacks the cohesion of the other games in the series. Can you imagine? No, monsieur. Imagination has never been my uh, strong suit. Number 11, Assassin's Creed, the original. <laughs> It may be the game that started it all and is certainly a classic, but the original Assassin's Creed is too dated for many modern gamers to stomach. Though it gets points for the nostalgia and introducing all the core elements we still expect in new entries, it has plenty of issues. All three of the major cities are washed out and boring to platform through for hours on end, the combat is tedious, and don't get us started on the tailing and eavesdropping missions. Finally, while Altair was a good enough protagonist at the time, despite his voiceover actor being miscast, we've had many more dynamic and interesting characters in the years since then. It's easy to find him boring if you go back and replay. Number 10, Assassin's Creed Unity. And we're back. Not everyone is so fortunate the first time through a bridge. Sometimes our initiates are trapped in the system and we have no choice but to send someone like you in to rescue them. A casualty of Ubisoft's old habit of releasing at least one Assassin's Creed game every year, two in 2014. Unity certainly suffered for not getting the time it needed. Though the Romeo and Juliet story of Arno and Elise was at least something new, and the turmoil of the French Revolution could have been a phenomenal setting, the game was plagued with bugs. With one of the most disastrous launches in video game history, game breaking glitches were found around every Parisian corner. Though, if you go back and play it now, it's definitely improved, but it's hard to wash away the taste of that infamous missing face glitch, and you'll still encounter frame rate drops. These are the words spoken by our ancestors, the words that lay at the heart of our creed. Stay your blade from the flesh of the innocent. Hide in plain sight. Never compromise the Brotherhood. Number 9 Assassin's Creed Revelations. What is in that library is not for you, not for the Templars. <sighs> You can have Altair's books, Ezio. We only want guidance. The conclusion of Ezio's story deserved a grand adventure, sending him to Constantinople to follow directly in Altair's footsteps. Unfortunately, Revelations wasn't able to innovate as much as its predecessors. The writing is strong, and Ezio meets plenty of interesting characters and historical figures, not to mention the all new hook blade and other gadgets. But Revelations is bogged down by missteps. The worst defender by far is the Tower Defense minigame. Luckily, the Tower Defense hasn't been seen in the series since, but that doesn't mean you can avoid it while playing Revelations. It's still an important piece of the story, though, disappointing as some parts are. Come, my boy, and ready your blade. This battle is not yet won. Number 8. Assassin's Creed 3. Hey, them. General Braddock. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. 
Wolves often travel in packs. A new continent was needed to make Assassin's Creed fresh, and that's what we got when the game took us to the heart of the American Revolution. Unfortunately, the overly ambitious cinematic trailers left many players feeling shortchanged when the game was released. On top of the fact that Connor was an absolutely bland character. You have my thanks. It also didn't help that strange story contrivances meant Connor had quite a role to play, conveniently present for all of the revolution's major events, like the Midnight Ride and the Boston Tea Party. But time has been kind to this game, and it added plenty of new features like the hunting and the sailing that have become mainstays for the franchise. Been a pain in my ass after all. But we are brothers in arms. Once, perhaps, no longer. Number seven, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Finally, you would be wise to remember that Staric never acts alone. There are gang leaders in every borough. You'll meet them soon enough, no doubt. The most modern game in the entire series, Syndicate takes place in London in the 1860s and sees twin assassins Evie and Jacob Fry brushing shoulders with everyone from Charles Dickens to Queen Victoria. As always, the setting is rich and a lively one to explore, and London looks absolutely gorgeous, especially once you get your hands on the grappling hook. Lovely view. But Syndicate had similar issues to its immediate predecessor. While it was nowhere near as buggy, it had too little innovation, with more of the same gameplay and story beats we've been seeing in the series since 2007. While the Fry Twins were a welcome departure from the lovesick Arno, Syndicate was a firmly average Assassin's Creed title. Not to mention its very comedic villain. Patience, Evie. Ah, oh, the gentle sound of opportunity passing us by. Number six, Assassin's Creed Rogue. Shay Cormac is an assassin, but he is unlike the ones you have used for your entertainment products in the past. To conclude the Kenway trilogy and rival Arno's commitment to the Brotherhood, Rogue was released alongside Unity with a new take on the series wearing factions. This time around, you are going to play as the Templar. Be at ease, Master Cormac. We are friends. The Finnegans were worried you might take matters into your own hands. It's an interesting setup, with Shay Cormac, a disillusioned assassin who jumps ship after tragedy strikes in Lisbon. Though it had plenty more naval combat and revised some areas from the game's past, Rogue also took us up northward into the Arctic Circle for exciting icy environments that we hadn't yet seen. But Rogue could have been better if the ideological divide between the two factions were explored more. Without this, the story does end up feeling a little bit half-baked, despite Shay's very interesting character development. The future of the whole continent, maybe the whole world, is tied up in that manuscript. Perhaps. But we don't have the right to decide that future. Number five, Assassin's Creed Origins. I'm going to find every stone circle, the Sphinx and the pyramids too. And I'll find my place. The biggest gameplay overhaul in the series to date. Origins went above and beyond every previous game in regards to its combat system and open world. No more mindless button mashing and insta-kill counters. In Origins, there was a fully realized looting and weapon upgrade system not to mention the much needed rework of Eagle Vision. Hey! Now, instead of your historical immersion being broken with glowing enemies, you can take control of Bayek's pet eagle, Senu, and scout Egypt from above. The story also delivered on the promise of the title. Though it took a while for us to get there, we finally found the origins of the Assassin's Brotherhood and the Templar Order. You and I are... I've always patched you two up, made excuses to your parents. Times have changed, but you, I can count on. Number four, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. News of the Villa attack has spread across the city. We were certain that you were dead. Not yet. I am still very much alive. This is Ezio Aldatore in his prime. He's finished his journey into becoming an assassin and is now a respected leader, tasked with taking down the Borgias and returning Rome to the people. While the story is outstanding, the gameplay didn't necessarily move on, and button mashing swordplay is Brotherhood's bread and butter. Order. And though Rome is vast, 
You can't forget that the previous two games each had numerous areas you could explore. Plus, all the best characters were the ones we'd already met from the last game. How do I find them? I can give you a general location. I suggest looking for signs of distress nearby. Perhaps you will uncover citizens who can point you in the right direction. Number 3. Assassin's Creed Odyssey Everybody benefits, especially you. You've chosen the great Phobos. He's never let me down. Phobos. The most recent game in the series to date, Odyssey took us all the way back to ancient Greece during the Peloponnesian War. Much like Origins contained the entirety of Egypt, Odyssey intrinsically recreated Greece and many of its islands, all with their own distinct feel. History has a way of remembering things strangely. You talk as if you were there. But it's impossible to ignore how divisive Odyssey has been among longtime fans. With many saying it goes too hard on the RPG elements and lamenting the fact that this is an Assassin's Creed game. You don't often get the opportunity to assassinate anybody, but with such likeable characters and a very human story about family at the heart of this ancient epic, it's easy to forgive Odyssey's flaws. But until that glorious day comes, we should find out what happened here. Do you have any ideas? Not yet, but I will. Number 2. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag While the naval combat felt a little out of place in Assassin's Creed 3, when Black Flag was released a year later, it all clicked into place. Players took on the role of the ruthless pirate Edward Kenway, as he plunders the Caribbean alongside history's most famous bandits. What's this I hear about a planned raid on a plantation? Not keeping secrets from me, are you? Not very well. Offering more freedom of exploration than any game before it, you can inhabit the beautiful environments of Cuba and the Bahamas while you hunt for treasure. Though this story takes a while to really get going, and Kenway is the most reluctant assassin in the whole series, he grows more than any other protagonist. And perhaps Black Flag would be the best game of it all if it weren't for all those tailing missions. You might not talk so loud, son. This isn't anything like a friendly port, Ken. Nonsense, man. I had a delightful conversation with the chat just now. We came to fight and understand it. Number 1. Assassin's Creed 2. Just a scratch. Let the doctor decide. It's not necessary. Besides, I've no money for this doctor of yours. <laughs> wasted it on women and wine, huh? I'd hardly call it wasted. Altair was fine at the time, but the introduction of Ezio showed just how good of a character an assassin could be. To this day, Ezio is held up as the best protagonist the series has ever produced, leaving behind some enormous boots to fill as his trilogy concluded. At your service, Mr. Ezio. <laughs> How do you know my name? An Assassin's Creed 2's engaging story, a personal tale about Ezio growing up and seeking revenge for the murder of his father and brothers, is largely the reason for this. It also introduced us to the brighter setting of Renaissance Italy, as Ezio travelled through Florence, Venice and his family's Tuscan villa. An improvement of the first game in every capacity, 2 is certainly still the franchise's peak, arguably. I am in your debt. Tell me, why did you help me? You are not the only one who lost a brother to the Pazzi. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.